Water is flooding into New York City. Looks like is sinking into the ocean there. You gotta take a look at this. All the winds have picked up and this is what happens. Debris like pieces of the boardwalk have come for three blocks. Sandy is coming. The question is, how will New York City handle it? Almost six years ago, Superstorm Sandy slammed into the eastern seaboard. It was historically bad for New York and New Jersey. Let me start with, I just never thought I would see uh, what I saw today. It ground much of New York City's subway system to a halt and blacked out Lower Manhattan. Lower Manhattan remains eerily dark and partially underwater. Bad as Sandy was, climate models tend to point to one thing. Storms getting more intense and more frequent. Hurricanes will dump more rain, and rising sea levels will make storm surge worse. That means more flooding. A storm like Sandy will come again, but in the meantime, New York is gearing up for battle. And they're hoping it will be enough. Sandy was a wake-up call for New York. Hurricane Sandy is, a, is a, the place to start that conversation. It was the worst natural disaster we've ever faced as a city. 44 lives were lost, $19 billion in damages and lost economic activity. Um, it really caused us to rethink uh, what it means to be a coastal city with 520 miles of coastline. Dan Zarelli is Senior Director for Climate Policy Programs in the city. He's keeping tabs on a wide range of programs aimed at preparing New York for climate change and surviving the next Sandy. That means efforts to fortify the shorelines, protect public housing and hospitals, and crucially, improve infrastructure like power and subways for when they're needed most. Post-Sandy context, we're investing over $20 billion in climate adaptation measures. We're also working to build resilience into everything we do every day. Every dollar we spend, we get more resilient, we get better prepared. New York City isn't alone, of course. Major megacities sit on coasts all around the world. Think of Tokyo, Shanghai, Mumbai, Buenos Aires. Around 40% of the world's population lives on or near the coast. That's almost two and a half billion people. And globally, NASA thinks sea levels could rise as much as six and a half feet by the year 2100. These are global problems, but the fixes have to be so completely unique to each city. And in the case of New York, unique to each subway station, each station, although they all seem identical and you know their stairs going down, each one presents its own unique challenge. Uh, when you start opening up concrete, opening up walls and stuff like that, everything poses a different challenge. So you approach one challenge at a time and uh, one station at a time. Verge science reporter Alessandra Potenza took a tour of New York City's subway system with Robert Laga, a program manager with New York City Transit. He showed us the newest tools the MTA is using to prevent water from flooding the system like it did during Hurricane Sandy, which the city is still recovering from. First, Robert showed us a relatively simple way of preventing floodwaters from entering the system. Stop logs. These 80-pound aluminum logs are stacked at subway entrances that are prone to flooding, in this case, the Whitehall Street Station. The logs take about an hour to install and should keep about 14 feet of water out of the subway. Everything has to be done manually, of course, since the MTA can't rely on electricity during a blackout. Next, Robert showed us a battleship-rated marine door, which weighs 3,000 pounds but can be put in place using one hand. Using a standard bicycle pump, a rubber gasket around the door is inflated to seal the entrance shut. Above ground, the subway ventilation grates pose a huge issue for flood surge. They allow water to just pour in. To combat this, the MTA has installed mechanical closure devices, or MCDs, to around 3,000 vents. They're essentially trap doors that can be closed in a matter of seconds, again, with no electricity needed. Prior to having MCDs... Pretty much plywood and sandbags. Like, that was it. And moving uptown to Canal Street, we saw another simple yet effective device, a flex gate designed by ILC Dover, best known as the company that designed spacesuits for NASA's Apollo mission. This Kevlar tarp can be rolled out by a single person in minutes, closing off the subway entrances and protecting it from up to 16 feet of waterhead. So the MTA has proper safeguards in place. The only thing left is to test them against the elements. The MTA has set a disaster yardstick for all of its work. The upgraded subway should survive a Category 2 hurricane. That means winds of up to 110 miles per hour and a storm surge to match. For reference, Sandy slammed the area with 80 mile an hour winds. And the city is preparing for an extra three feet of water beyond what a Category 2 storm brings one foot to account for future sea level rise, one foot to account for wave action, and one foot of just extra wiggle room. But climate models include a huge range of possible outcomes. By 2050, models suggest sea levels alone could increase up to two and a half feet in the region, far outstripping the MTA's plan. Robert Laga says they'll be evaluating that plan periodically. 
and ultimately, we don't have a clue when the next Sandy will arrive. The very worst storm on record hit the area in 1821 and brought winds of up to 156 miles per hour. That put it just shy of a Category 5, and again, the MTA is preparing for a Category 2. For now, all New York can do is react, improve, live with uncertainty, and use Sandy as leverage against complacency. We're at the beginning of this, and, and uh, since Hurricane Sandy, we've invested billions of dollars in this already, and we have more to do. But by no means are we close to being done with everything that needs to happen to make New York City climate ready. And we're going to continue to get more and more prepared. Just for the record, uh, we just finished making the video, and this is what our um, subway system looks like after a flash flood. Uh, so um, I don't know if we are quite ready for another hurricane. Um, but it should be interesting. 